Welcome back. So far we saw about the importance of support materials which are like your basic shirts and trousers. We learned how to shop for these shirts and trousers. And then we saw the importance of accessories and how to choose them. You got to choose common accessories was the lesson. Now today's message is that be brand specific. Now do you recognize this brand? I'm sure most of you would recognize this brand of shirts and trousers. I'm not endorsing any brand or promoting any brand here. I'm just giving an example. It's a very common brand. This is an image that we have seen time and again. The moment this image is displayed, we know what brand it is. But now think about this. Do you recognize this brand of apparels? I don't think you would because I tried doing some online shopping for shirts. I, I searched for men's shirts. I sorted them by price low to high and this was the lowest. The beauty was that these guys did not even have a logo. I had to design a logo for them so that I can do a session for all of you. Now the point here is this. Your audience can recognize a brand image for which they have a reference. Now I'm sure you would have heard your mentors speak time and again about creating visual imageries on stage. I've heard my mentor tell me a lot of times when you speak about an elephant, your audience should be able to see an elephant on stage. If you speak about a mountain, your audience should be able to see a mountain on stage. If you speak about a coffee, your audience should be able to smell the coffee. Now that's the beauty of public speaking. You create visual and auditory imageries. Now when you create visual imageries, it's extremely important to show your audience only what they have seen before. Now picture this. I'm giving a speech where I'm telling, I went to the love of my life, went on my knees, gave her a bunch of middle mist and told her, I love you. Now were you able to pictureize the scene completely? I'm sure it's tough because you have not seen a middle miss before. But if I tell this, I went to the love of my life with a bunch of red beautiful roses and romantically gave her and told her, honey, I love you. Now this is something that you can pictureize because the moment I say rose, you have a reference image to think about. But the moment I say middle mist, you don't have a reference image. Your mind returns, search results not found, right? In fact, middle mist is one of the rarest flowers in the world and it's found only in two gardens in the entire world if I'm not wrong. Now, you might have been the best boyfriend, spent all your time, effort and money, found a bunch of middle mist flowers and would have given it to your girlfriend romantically. But your audience cannot picture that because they have not seen a middle mist before. They don't have a reference image. Now, like we saw in one of our previous videos, if it's a longer speech, 10 minutes or a 30 minutes keynote, to some extent it's okay, you have some time and liberty to show them a picture of a middle mist, to explain them what it is all about, tell them that it's one of the rarest flowers in the world and then tell your story. It might make an impact. But given the time limitations of an impromptu speech, always tell your audience what they don't know, but show them only what they've seen before. Show your audience something for, this, for which they have a reference image already. Something that they can relate to. Now all my audience have to do is imagine a Hollywood movie where the hero goes on his knees, proposes to his girlfriend, replace the hero's image with mine, they are done. Right? So next time when you create visual imageries in an impromptu speech specifically, remember this. Tell your audience what they don't know, it's perfectly alright. They don't know my love story, I can tell them. But show them only what they have seen before.